we're going to take another look at defining acids and bases here, specifically using Arrhenius's theory of acids and bases. So using some of our prior knowledge, um, let's fill out as much of this table as we can. So litmus paper in the presence of an acid, we know that blue paper turns red and red paper stays red. Uh, for a base, we know that red paper turns blue and blue paper will stay blue. You have to test with both red and blue litmus um, to know what's going on. Um, you can also test with neutral litmus paper, which takes the role of both, and whatever color you get, whether it's red or blue, will indicate an acid and a base. So it simplifies things a little bit. The pH um, of an acid is less than 7, and a base is greater than 7. We know that an acid will conduct because all acids ionize in water to the degree um, is different, um, so between strong and weak acids, but there are um, positive and negative ions in both strong and weak acids, so they all conduct. Bases always conduct as well because bases are ionic compounds to begin with, okay? There is one exception, and we'll talk about it uh, a little bit later. A um, couple things, we even don't know the taste of things um, just based on acidic foods that we know of, like lemons, uh, they are sour, and bases are bitter. Uh, the good example of a base is soap. Uh, the feel of an acids, they have no feel. The feel of a base, they are slippery. All right, the reaction with metals. Um, acids will bubble when a metal such as zinc or magnesium are added to solution. And the reason is, let's use for instance, if we have HCl reacting with zinc. So zinc's a solid, HCl is aqueous. We're going to make zinc chloride, which is aqueous. And we're left with H2, which is a gas. H2 is what's making the bubbles. With a base, there is no reaction. Um, okay. An Arrhenius acid is a substance that ionizes to form hydrogen ions, or H+, in aqueous solution. An acid will increase the concentration of H plus ions and therefore must contain these hydrogens as the source of hydrogen ions. So what that's saying is, for instance, if we have HNO3 in water, HNO3 will ionize into H plus and NO3 minus, and it's the presence of this H plus on its own that makes this solution acidic. Therefore, H, um, the compound has to actually have a hydrogen in it. It has to have an acidic hydrogen. So not everything with a hydrogen in it is acidic, is what we need to remember here. Um, if H2SO3 reacts or ionizes in water, sorry, uh, we'll get two hydrogen ions and SO3 minus, two minus three. Again, the presence of these H's uh, free from the compound itself is what creates the acidic um, solution. An Arrhenius base is a substance that dissociates to produce hydroxide ions. It only has to dissociate because it is already ionic. So it's producing hydroxide ions or OH minus in aqueous solution. A base will increase the concentration of hydroxide ions and therefore must contain them as the source. So OH must be within the formula of the compound for it to be basic is what this is saying. So an example, let's use ammonium hydroxide. When I put it in water, it will dissociate into NH4 plus and OH minus. The OH minus on its own is what makes this solution basic. We can also use calcium hydroxide as an example here. Calcium hydroxide dissolves in water or dissociates into calcium ions, oopsie, and two OH minus ions. 
Again, the fact that these OH minuses are free in solution is what makes this solution basic. So with that idea, in class, we would actually test all of these compounds. Um, so using what we currently know about um, acids and bases, I would want you to predict what you think is going to happen for these. So pause the video here and predict whether you think these are going to be acidic, basic, or neutral. Um, again, knowing what we know of acids and bases. We should think that this is neutral. These H's are not listed out front. Um, so we wouldn't consider this an acidic compound. I would say this is probably neutral. There's no H or OH. Neutral, no H or OH. Neutral, no H or OH. And you might think this is acidic because there's an H there if you wanted. Um, whatever you have for your prediction is fine. If we were to actually do this in the class, I would do a litmus test for all of these. And what we're going to see is that this one is blue. This one is blue. This one is red. This one is red. And um, NaHPO4 is blue. So um, this would imply that NH3 is a base. Na2CO3 is also a base. CO2 is an acid in water. Aluminum sulfate is an acid in water. And Na2HPO4 is a base in water. And none of these were what we predicted. So Arrhenius had to go back to the drawing board. He needed a new theory um, about acids and bases. So he created the Arrhenius' modified theory, or the modified Arrhenius theory, whatever you want to call it. Um, it involves the reaction of dissolved substances, so they have to be aqueous, with water. So an Arrhenius acid actually reacts with water to produce what we call hydronium ions. Now we saw these in um, our pH and pOH unit, and we said that H3O plus concentration is equal to H plus concentration. And here's why. So generally, what happens is an acid, so we'll say HA, where A could be Cl minus, it could be Br minus, it could be SO4 2 minus, and there would be two H's. Whatever it is, it's aqueous, it's dissolved in water, and it has to react with water. And this will produce um, H3O and an A minus. Now, this is because the H plus here joins up with water to make H3O plus. So acids will donate their H to water. This is very closely related, obviously, just to the ionization of this, which was what we would previously write. Let's see, that would be A minus. So we get one to one ratio or the same number of H3Os to H. And that's why we could generalize like this for our pH. However, the better representation of what an acid does in water is Arrhenius is modified. So we won't really use this idea anymore. It's again, a generalization of what's happening in water. So with this idea, let's write the modified Arrhenius theory reactions um, for HCl and sodium hydrogen sulfate. Um, I think I changed this to sulfite in our notes, actually. So hydrochloric acid is HCl, and acids will always react with water to produce H3O plus and the leftover ion. So in this case, it'll be Cl minus. Sodium hydrogen sulfite isn't actually an acid yet. So it's ionic, and the first thing we do for every ionic compound is dissociate it. So we're going to pretend that we're dissolving this in water first off. So it's starting as a solid, and what happens is the metal comes out on its own, and then we get HSO3 minus. This is hydrogen sulfite. It is on our periodic table in the list of polyatomic ions. So the first step for ionic is to dissociate. Now, we could try and dissolve um, and react Na plus with water, but 
Na doesn't have an H to give to water. So there's no reaction. None of our metal ions will ever react with water. However, our negative ion here has an H. Oops, my pens just fell off. It has an H. Therefore, this can react with water. So we're going to work with HSO3 minus and react that with water. It can act like an acid because it has an H to donate to water. H gets donated to water. We get H3O plus. And what we're left with is SO3, now a 2 minus. I took an H plus away. Its charge was originally a negative. If I take away another positive, it's 2 negative. A little trick for charges is that the overall charge of all of our reactants must add up to the overall charge of all of our um, products, or sorry, vice versa. All of our products must equal to all of our reactants and charge. So the overall charge in the reactants here is negative 1 because this is neutral. So negative one and zero is negative one as a charge. Positive one and negative two is negative one as a charge. So they have to equal one another um, in terms of a charge on each side of the reaction. All right, so that's what um, we have for acids. Modified Arrhenius theory for bases is that an Arrhenius base dissociates or reacts with water to produce OH minus an aqueous solution. So there's two options here. It can just dissociate or it can react with water. So um, the original definition where it just has to dissociate, we have some metal with an OH ion. If it is soluble, it's going to make M, in this case, just one plus and an OH minus. So because this makes OH, Without any reaction with water, it had OH in its formula. This one only needed to dissociate. If, however, um, it does not have an OH in its formula, bases can also just be some sort of aqueous compound. It can be a charge, so this could have a negative charge technically. And what's going to happen is it'll react with water, which, remember, is HOH. So what can happen here is the H from water, it's a positive, remember, can be attracted to this base or this base ion in this case, and we'll make H B. It'll be neutral if this was a 1 minus and H is a 1 plus. This is aqueous, and what's left over of water is OH minus. So the leftovers from water is what make this basic. So let's try this with ammonia. Ammonia is the one neutral charged compound that acts like a base. Okay, so NH3 in water, it's not ionic, so it does not need to dissociate first. We are simply going to react it with water. Ammonia will accept 1H from water, and it'll make NH4 and it'll be a positive charge. Because it was neutral and it gained an H+, plus, it's now 1 plus. The leftovers of water are OH minus. Now let's add up charges on both sides. Neutral to begin with in both of these compounds, so zero overall for charge in the reactants. And in the products, a positive one and a negative one make an overall neutral charge. The fact that this makes OH minus in water means that it is a basic compound. Sodium carbonate. If I write out the formula, I can see that this is ionic. The first step for ionic compounds is to dissociate in water. So just like we, oh, sorry, not an OH, silly. Uh, that is CO3, two minus. So just like we did with the acids, I'm gonna show you um, the reaction with a metal in water. Again, this is the basic section, so I'll show you that we cannot make a base with even one of ours. So plus H2O. Remember, this is HOH. A positive ion, Na+, plus, will not attract a positive ion. So it will not react in water. 
So what this means is you never need to worry about the metal ion reacting with water to produce H3O or OH minus. What we do need to concern ourselves with is the secondary ion here, so the anion. So CO3 2 minus reacts with one molecule of water. Remember, again, this is HOH. And we're going to get this H plus being attracted to the two negative here. So that will make us an HCO3 now just a one minus because we had a two positive, we added a one positive, we're left with one negative. And the leftovers of water, which is OH minus. We should put our chart, our states there. Just double checking our charges here. We have two negative overall in our reactants. We have a negative and a negative in our products, a neg overall a negative two. So our charges are balanced. The fact that this made OH minus in water proves that it is a base. Okay. Things to note here. Yes, this is a two negative. Technically, can it react with two water molecules? Yes, but we only need to show it with one. And I'll talk about it a little bit later um, as to why. But we only need to show one to prove that it's made an OH minus in water, making this a basic solution. So as soon as you get an OH or an H3O, you stop your reactions. You know that it's an acid or a base. Um, and we'll show more reactions with this kind of compound where it has multiple chances to react with water in our next topic. So just react once. So in general, acids will donate H pluses and bases accept H pluses from water. Um, bases that react with water have a negative charge typically um, with the exception of ammonia, which we just saw on our previous page here. For metal hydroxides such as lithium hydroxide, there is no need to show a reaction with water because hydroxide ions are already present in the original substance. So for instance, lithium hydroxide, it's ionic, our first step is to dissociate. As soon as I dissociate, I made an OH minus. It's basic, we're done. There's no need to react with water further if you already know if it's an acid or a base. When neutral substances dissolve in water, they do not produce hydronium or hydroxide ions. The following ions are considered neutral and will not react with water to form hydroxide. So Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, NO3 minus, ClO4 minus. I don't know if you're seeing something here and HSO4 minus, specifically with the H. These are all of the anions of strong acids. Okay, so if I add an H to all of these, they become a strong acid. So um, the anion of a strong acid will not act as a base. It will not accept an H. So it's, we can't make a strong acid is what that's saying. Um, be careful with this one. I'll try um, and highlight it here, but uh, HSO4 will not act as a base, but SO4 2 minus will, okay? Because when SO4 2 minus adds an H, it's not quite the strong acid yet. So we can add one H, but we can't add two H's to SO4 2 minus. Okay, so why? Um, I'll show you why. Um, what you need to know is uh, just kind of memorize those ions and that they will never um, accept an H in water. Okay, so let's use NaClO4. So first step, it's ionic, is to dissociate Na plus and ClO4 minus. So we know that metal ions do not react with water to produce H plus or sorry, H3O plus or OH minus. So we're going to react with ClO4. So let's try it. ClO4 minus reacting with water would make HClO4 and OH minus. Now this is a strong acid and this is a base. An acid and a base make water. So these will always end up neutralizing one another where 
um, the H here. We'll go with the OH minus, so we'll get H2O and ClO4 minus, which is da, 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 our reactants. So as soon as we make these products, they actually go ahead and neutralize one another and make reactants again. So this reaction does not happen. Anytime you make a strong acid and an OH minus, the reaction will not occur. And that means that this is a neutral solution because there was no H3O plus or OH minus produced. Any of the OH minus produced is immediately um, neutralized by the strong acid that's also produced alongside of it. Uh, again, I cannot add, um, I cannot, sorry, react HSO4 with water because I make H2SO4 and OH minus a strong acid and a base. Um, so this reaction does not occur and this is a neutral ion. However, if I were to use SO4 2 minus and react that with water, I make HSO4 minus and OH minus. This is not a strong acid, so this is a basic solution. Okay, it has to make the actual strong acid itself. Okay, use the modified Arrhenius theory to write a reaction equation to explain the acidic, basic, or neutral properties for each of the following compounds when placed in water. So go ahead and pause this. Um, I'm just going to write in the um, pH results, so whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral. Um, and you can check your work in our, um, in our notes. All right, sodium hydrogen sulfate can act as an acid in water. Sulfuric acid is obviously an acid. Barium hydroxide is an acid. Oh, sorry, geez, please. A base. And sodium cyanide is also a base. Now, I know that hydrogen sulfate, we just discussed it. It cannot act as a base. So HSO4 minus plus water, it wouldn't um, accept an H. However, it can donate one. So it'll make H2, sorry, SO4 2 minus and H3O plus. Check your notes if you're confused, okay? Or check my PDF notes if you want to take another look at that one. A solution of sodium hydrogen phosphate is made by dissolving the solid in water. Will the solution be acidic, basic, or neutral? So sodium hydrogen phosphate, the formula for that is Na2HPO4. So um, this is ionic. Our first step is to dissociate. So 2Na plus and HPO4 2 minus. Now, Looking at this, it's got an H to donate. So technically, I could get HPO4 2 minus to react with water to make H3O plus and PO4 3 minus. However, some of you may also see that HPO4, H, sorry, PO4 2 minus could technically accept an H from water, making H2PO4 minus, which isn't a strong acid, so this reaction can occur, and OH minus. So this would have been an acid, this is a base. So which one is it? Well, in this case, we would actually have to test this in water. Um, using Arrhenius's modified theory, it doesn't explain whether something, if it can, will act as an acid or a base if it has both options. So we would actually need to physically test this. In grade 12, we learn a new theory that helps us to predict, just looking at the formula, whether something would be an acid or a base if it had both options. All right. Dissolving molecular oxide, such as CO2 in water, creates an acidic solution. 
Now this one's a little bit tricky, but if we were in class, I would have somebody um, blow through a straw into water and we would actually be able to see this um, as an acid. So water and CO2 or for any molecular oxide like SO2, NO2, um, NO, lots of options. Um, what happens is they all combine together. So we're going to make H2, a C, and then we have three oxygens. This will now be dissolved in water. Now this looks familiar. This is carbonic acid. And we know we haven't actually proved that it's an acid until we've made an OH or sorry, an H3O plus a hydronium ion in water. So we need to show that it reacts with water using Arrhenius's modified theory to make an H3O plus. And we're going to be left with HCO3 minus. So the fact that it made an H3O plus in water means that this can act as an acid. The trick with a molecular oxide is that the first reaction is a com uh, like a, a formation, if you will. And then we need to use the modified Arrhenius theory. Again, you must show that an H3O or an OH- is produced before you can say that something is acidic or basic in water. So we know a molecular oxide in water creates an acidic solution, whereas a metal oxide in water creates a basic solution. So let's show this. What is the expected pH result when Na2O is dissolved in water? Well, we just said it's a basic solution, so we would expect that litmus will be blue. Um, but let's prove that. So Na2O is a ionic compound. And the first step is to dissociate it if it is soluble. Everything with sodium is soluble, so we're going to get two Na plus and an O2 negative. Now, Na does not react. It's a metal ion. It does not react to produce acidic or basic ions. So we're going to look at the O2 negative. Oopsie, uh, wrong place for the two. Just a habit can react with water, and because it's negative, it can steal the positive H from water, making HO and leaving OH minus. Now, some of you are like, what is HO? Well, it's OH minus and OH minus, meaning it just made two OHs. So it is quite basic because it makes two in one go. All right, the practice for you guys is in your notes. Um, I will include a key online for you um, to make sure that you can check your work. Um, make sure you do the homework this week. It's very important that you take a look at Arrhenius and understand that things without an H or an OH in its formula originally can actually become acidic or basic by reacting with water. So now we actually have to show water within our reactions.